Hey, people. It's me again. So, anyways, um, there was Clownfish TV had talked about that, and I think a couple other people that, that are like Clownfish TV that talk about more on the entertainment aspect of the the culture wars when it comes to everybody versus the woke laughter or whatever you call it in a way. So anyways, um then especially when it comes to, you know, Disney going down to twos because of the woke washing of the live action remakes and all of that. You know, like how they're making Tinkerbell and Peter Pan and Wendy be black, you know, and all this sort of stuff there. Yeah. As well as the the little mermaid live action remake that people don't really care much for. It's just one of those woke cash grabs. Yeah. So, on the other hand, there, we have, uh, the much anticipated, uh, premiere of the Super Mario Brothers movie, as far as that goes, instead of, like, that, that cheap knockoff adaptation that I've seen, like, just about, like, 30 years ago, that one, that live-action version, which is, which barely even resembled Super Mario Brothers, as far as that goes. So, anyways, there was this part of the story about how one of these woke dunderheads, like the other version of it, because there was this sort of anti consumerist message of some sort buried beneath the all of that sort of stuff there. Yeah. But to tell the truth for that matter, when it came to this sort of thing, you know as far as that goes. Yeah. So, anyways, um, considering this sort of thing here was that that same person was upset over, you know, when it comes to the new Super Mario Brothers movie and you know, all of this sort of stuff there, it, it kind of reminded me of this one story, I think it was probably around, like, 2015 when I started, uh, reading stories off of the raw story, you know, up until, like, I think it was like 2016 was when I stopped reading like, the stuff from Raw Story as far as that goes. And the whole story was is that this one woman was upset over Disney's Frozen because of now that the, the daughter wants all of these if Disney's frozen toys like Elsa and Anna figurines and and other toys of that sort and blah 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 and how she's trying to raise her to be you know consumerist free or whatever that that sort of uh, BS there as far as that goes and it's one of those little things again where I get why they're trying to raise their kids to be less consumerist or whatnot as far as that goes. Yeah. But 
when you overdo it to the point where it um, it it really kind of puts a huge detriment on the children as far as their uh, development emotionally and socially and as far as that goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, in a way, if it was just merely for financial reasons why you couldn't really buy all these sort of toys, that that's something, like, kids would understand. But if it was just merely on principle and all this sort of stuff, then, you know, not to make them be all materialistic, consumerist, or whatnot, then they're going to go dive into that sort of thing because of the whole slingshot effect sort of thing. Yeah. But that's like one of the things there. You know what I mean? But I think the truth of the matter is, you know, there is like this sort of era of anti-consumerism of that sort. If I recall correctly, in the 90s, to a certain extent, you know, because it, if I remember correctly, like the 80s was this sort of peak of this kind of consumerist sort of thing there in the 80s but then there there was I don't know if there was this anti-consumerism kind of thing in the, in the 70s I think there might have been that kind of case when it came to like the hippies back in the early 70s maybe in the mid 70s but I don't know as far as the late 70s early 80s maybe not so, so much you know but it just reminds me of a lot of those other things again, you know, where we're going in that kind of period of where there's this anti-consumerism of that sort, and then it just shifts back into this really pro-consumerism with a vengeance of that sort. Because if I remember correctly, I think when it came to like the aunts, there might have been some sort of like pro, very that much consumerism in the aunts because of that was when you know we had uh, the rise of like the smartphones and all this sort of stuff yeah but it reminds me of this one video that Romanian TV had had uh, uploaded a, a while ago where he was taking like the excerpts of like of these people who were like the hippies back in the late 60s early 70s and in a way how there was this one hippie who said he doesn't work he he lives or something like in that sort because it was like sticking it to the man that sort yeah but I don't even remember if they even used that phrase sticking it to the man because that was kind of like how it was back in the 90s you know you know sticking it to the man was something you know it was like the same as smashing the patriarchy or 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 whatever it is yeah but somehow it's like I do detect a tinge of jealousy in some ways of when it comes to like these sort of people who are like very anti-consumerist and you know and have like this sort of jealousy sour grapes kind of thing you know when you look at it in a more broader sense of that sort 
but I'm not necessarily saying that that's like really true. I mean, I'm, you know, there could be just certain people that, well, if they were like that, and then again, there were some hippies that back in the day would would be considered, you know, trustafarians by today's standards. Yeah. And that's kind of like what it is when you see a lot of your average woke dunderhead in some form or another, you know, they're the, the champagne socialist trustafarian type who who is, you know, putting on this sort of facade of caring for the less unfortunate because they have that silver spoon or, you know, or whatnot and don't realize what it's like to not have things as far as that goes. And it was one of the bigger reasonings why they were pushed for some of these sort of things because of that. Because in a way, a lot of these sort of people are very classes. Even though they say that they're not classist, but in reality, they're very classist. And, and a lot of people who are the less unfortunate financially could see right through this sort of facade of, of being charitable and all. The whole get off the soapbox, we need the wood always comes to mind when it comes to these sort of people. Yeah. But that's just something I had to kind of point out in this sort of thing. Yeah. But it was just one of those little things that um, this one person had said, like those whole tax rich shirts, you know, how they cost that much money or the old, or these Shirts that have like Che Guevara's picture on it, you know, and it's like the ultimate, you know, irony of it. How Che Guevara was, was you know, fighting for the working class and all this, and then, and then gets, you know, reduced to this sort of thing of the symbol of all of these. Hippies, you know, the, the slash, um, champagne socialist of that sort. And it just reminds me of that whole episode of South Park, you know, Die, Hippie, Die. And I think that was one of my favorite episodes. So, anyways, I guess that's probably it. So talk to you guys later.